Hello, everybody, and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo through one and this is your channel for everything VR related. Today, we're showing off the brand new Population One gameplay mode, Phoenix Royale. Now, honestly, I am super pumped to show this to you guys. They've made a ton of changes. I jumped in with a bunch of content creators. As you can imagine, it got hectic and crazy. But today, I'm planning just to walk you through how this new gameplay mode is so different and why I like it so much more. Now, there are, of course, links and timestamps if you want to skip ahead. But before we jump in, today's video is brought to you by the Prism XR Karina D1 Charging Dock. Now, guys, I know what you're thinking. What's so special about a charging dock? The D1 features magnetic connectors for not only the controllers, but also the headset itself. So unlike a lot of other Quest charging stands, where it's a pain to make sure that the headset and controllers are seated just right to make sure they charge, this guy slaps right in with ease, and I gotta say, it's a really nice looking stand. If you're interested in picking one up, there's a link down in the description. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention is if you're already a huge fan of Population 1, the original Battle Royale mode is staying unchanged. You can still jump into it, all the competition it offers, everything you like about it, still there, 100% unchanged. Phoenix Royale is a brand new mode that's designed to be a lot more noob friendly, more forgiving, faster paced, and in my opinion, I love every aspect of it. So let me walk you through how this brand new gameplay mode works. Dropping in remains the same and you're still in teams of three, but you will notice you're on a brand new map. It also has a loot box station with some golden weapons that you'll have to fight through some bots to get to. Additionally, there's some buy stations that have been placed all throughout the map, but we'll come back to those later. Now, at one point during my demo, I was lucky enough to have Big Box's own Spike on my team, AKA Eric for president. So I was basically just trying to get as much information as possible out of him and also follow his lead throughout this new gameplay mode. I'll follow you. I'm at the back. Alright, let's go. Let's okay, go. go. Loop wall. Right, That's go. where we were last time. Yeah. So we need to get uh, we need to get a weapon before we go in there though, because there's a lot of bots and they're uh, very strong. All right, so I'm gonna go in the nightclub here. There's gonna be a lot of bots. Uh, I'm going with you. Welcome. Oh, oh, someone behind you, bot. Oh, I got one of me. Coming or trying. Oh, oh god, I got one. Okay. Oh, there's one more. Uh, there might be more. Oh, uh, I'm in all the wrong places right now, aren't I? Okay. Weapons and equipment are still scattered throughout the map, and there's also gems that can be used as currency. It's very unlikely you'll find a weapon above two stars, so you'll need to use the buy stations to enhance your weapons. Now, in my first play session, we beelined for the loot crate to unlock those golden weapons, and we were lucky enough to take down the bots and get it. However, the next time we attempted this, when I was actually on Eric for President's team, everyone had the same idea, and it was just way too contested. We could not hold the area down. So it's really cool how this adds a new level of strategy to the overall gameplay because it's a huge advantage if you do unlock those golden guns up until now though the game has still pretty much been the same exact population one that you know and love with only a few minor changes or additions now where things really take a big turn is whenever you're killed instead of turning into a ghost and having to chase your teammates around hoping for a revival you'll now be redeployed after a set amount of time as long as one of your team members is still alive Ultimately, this makes combat much more forgiving. You're not as scared to engage somebody because if you die, you're not as likely to be kicked out of the game in two seconds. And it also cuts down on people who want to camp or just hide out in the final zone. Now, the ability to redeploy does not last forever. The respawn time does get longer and longer, and eventually it will be cut off. So you will have to go back to your teammates reviving you. As you do get closer and closer to that redeploy cutoff, you will, however, start spawning with better and better weapons just to help keep things competitive. Personally, I love all of these changes. They get the gameplay loop a lot closer to the pace that I'm looking for. It's not as slow as your typical battle royale. You can jump back in, get your retribution. I love it, but there's also other additional changes that change up the overall gameplay structure. And the probably the biggest one is what they've done to the zones. So not only will the combat area be closing off faster than normal, it will also begin to rotate locations towards the end of the map. So there's no more going around, looking for the best loot, and then just camping the end zone. Ooh, I found a purple AK. I see him. I don't find those very often. Oh, I hit him, but he didn't die. Okay. Shit, shit, shit. I got someone on my ass. Where's the zone? Oh, the zone's here. We gotta get out of here. We're in a bad spot. Who's right? I hear reviving.
Oh, they're underneath me. I'm gonna get to the zone. There's one behind us. Oh god, building. I'm running right to somebody. Oh, I got somebody. I made a mistake. Another one. Another. Nice, Tiger. Oh, keep moving. Out the door, keep moving. Oh, shit. Yeah, the zone's here. The zone, the zone hits very hard in this mode. Okay. Woo! Oh, shit. The main point here is that the gameplay flow has changed, you'll have to move around a lot, and there's no final end zone for people at camp. Now jumping back to those buy stations for a second, not only can you upgrade your weapons, but they've also included some brand new classes, which will give you some cool permanent buffs, like the ability to move faster or have more health. And that right there, I think, is everything you need to know about the new Phoenix Royale gameplay mode. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. But I just want to finish this video off with, I guess, my verdict, my conclusion, what I think. Well, as you probably figure by now, I absolutely love this update. And Big Box has proven once again why Population 1 is the king of VR Battle Royale. I'm sorry, Contractor Showdown, or the fans of Contractor Showdown. I know some people are going to have something to say in the comments. But between the original, highly competitive Battle Royale mode, this brand new Phoenix Royale mode that's a lot more new friendly, faster paced, probably a higher mainstream appeal, and then the Sandbox mode, all of this free to play. I'm sorry, guys but Population 1 is a must-play VR title. You absolutely have to give it a try. There's no reason not to. So that's my verdict, guys. Go out and try this. I love it. I highly recommend it. It is a pace that I am much more accustomed to and that I enjoy. So you'll probably see me in there pretty soon. Again, if you have any additional questions, I forgot to go over something, let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up time. Cosmo the dog is there chilling. He says, what's up? And I'll see you guys on next time. Oh, Big Box Spike, I love you so much. You're my favorite. Oh, Eric for president. Ooh, I caress you. Ooh.